there are unfortunately many microscopes sold online and and marketed or even advertised as dark field live blood analysis microscopes there's several that actually are, are sold you know in the actual name of the of the model it's called a a live blood analysis uh microscope and when you look at the actual specifications they always fall short you know um and and some of them quite quite dismally so with what the requirements are for for proper dark field analysis um you know dark field is 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 very very niche it's not something that's really used commonly in in you know normal investigations and normal microscopy so um it's it's quite niche that's used in in some instances with life sciences uh, looking at, at pond water and things like that um so for for those types of applications those types of microscopes would would probably be okay uh, but with dark field live blood analysis when we're actually looking at at blood samples in dark field uh, we're actually looking for structures that are not normally visible uh, with normal methods of illumination so when you're normally looking at a sample in bright field those elements won't be visible in the sample at all uh, when you change over to dark field then those elements become visible and if you don't have the correct dark field setup then those those elements will just simply remain invisible the challenge with that then is that you you know in practice never really sure of what you're not seeing you know if you're not if you're not able to see what your microscope you know should be allowing you to see then you're simply unaware of what you're not seeing in a sample and that that allows you then or, or causes you to to miss uh, a, a, a large number of very important anomalies. Most of the anomalies that we really work with and that often determine the, the course of treatment in a case are the anomalies that we actually see in dark field. So if I can show, I think the easiest would, would be to show some actual examples uh, of images um, you know, taken with a, a, a dark field microscope sold online as one of these cheaper types of dark field microscopes and then compare with what we're getting with with our microscope. Uh, the specifications are, are really important. So uh, one of the most important specifications and the first thing really to check when you're looking for a dark field microscope is to check the strength of the light source. Uh, we're actually looking at the specific watt wattage of the light source, and if you're able to to get the lumens, that's that's even better. Um, but the actual strength of the light source, and what you'll find, and I'm not I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but a lot of these dark field microscopes sold online won't actually specify the wattage of the of the light bulb. So if it's a halogen light bulb system, then often it would say a 30 watt uh, halogen light bulb. But with the LED systems, it often just says it's a it's a very bright, uh, dimmable LED. And when you really start looking and and actually find the actual specifications, you'll find that it's mostly either a two watt or three watt LED, which is equivalent usually to twenty or thirty watts halogen. So for dark field to really work and for us to actually see and, and get the, the 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 high degree of contrast that we should get you actually need a light source of at least 50 watts halogen uh, or the equivalent in, in LED. So our, our microscope systems, uh, the LED systems have a nine watt uh, LED light source uh, and that creates the, a brightness level equivalent to what you would get with a hundred watt mm -hmm. halogen system. Uh, so sorry, really I'm important. Sorry, what did you just say? What was the last, you said a couple, something about, I heard 50 watts halogen and then there was something else. Yeah, right so the minimum, the minimum requirement is 50 watt halogen and our uh, LED microscopes have a 9 watt LED system uh, that's equivalent in brightness to a 100 watt halogen. Okay. All right, so we have... And your microscope have, has the 50 watt halogen? Well, we also have those that in terms of the halogen illumination, that's the, the option that we have available is a 50 watt halogen. Um, and then we have the LED, which is a nine watt LED equivalent to uh, to a hundred watt halogen. So we don't really, okay. I actually can't recall the last time we sold uh, one of the fifty watt halogen systems because people generally go for for LED because it's it's brighter 
and obviously more efficient so there's no heat created by the light bulb like with okay. LED, with with halogen systems so there are many benefits to led um you know so so people generally go for that option uh, but the 50 watt halogen systems are still available you know for people that that feel that they need to you know specifically work with with halogen um i actually have a few examples here of of some images these are um live blood images taken just off uh, the, the internet off websites selling uh these other microscopes for live blood analysis uh and this is the, these are quite good examples for us to look at because uh what we always recommend when people are looking for a, a, a dark field live blood analysis microscope, if they're not able to get all the specifications or before they actually commit to buying the microscope, it is really important just to get an example of what an actual live blood image would look like with that microscope in dark field. And if the microscope is being advertised as a, a live blood analysis microscope, then the supplier should definitely be able to, to provide you with an image like that. Uh, so we have found a few of these microscopes online um, that have some images of live blood images or samples rather. This is one, uh, this is a uh, fairly uh, a commonly recommended microscope for live blood analysis. And we can actually see in here the magnification is, is quite low. Uh, so we're actually not really able to get the, the level of magnification that you need to achieve to be able to properly look at the shapes of the red blood cells themselves. We, of course, look at the actual shape of the cell membranes, the shapes of cells, and various things that may be found within the red blood cells as well. Uh, so the magnification level is, is, is really important. Uh, with our microscopes, when you use the 40 times objective, uh, the magnification is about four times more than what we're seeing on the screen here. Uh, so we achieve about a magnification of 1,600 times using the 40 times objective, uh, which is a lot more convenient to work with um, if you want to achieve a, a suitable magnification for live blood analysis with this type of setup. With this type of microscope, you would have to use the 100 times objective, uh, which also is not always very easy to work with, depending on the type of objective that's provided with a microscope. Uh, one would also need to check whether the 100 times objective actually has a, a built-in iris diaphragm to reduce the amount of light being allowed through the objective. Um, so this is with a, 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 an, a, a, a a microscope that's available online, a uh, dark field microscope sold online. It's, it's a fairly inexpensive microscope. And we can see the outlines of the red blood cells. Then we can see the white blood cells. We can see some structures that might be thrombocytes, but really not able to see very much detail. Uh, and you know, even if you zoom in, we're not really able to get much more clarity from that, you know, from that image. Uh, this is really not going to be suitable for, for dark field. You're not really going to be able to get much information from this. Uh, and you'll often be guessing, you know, what, what you're actually missing. We have a few other examples that will actually show what you should be seeing. So this is another microscope, a slightly better uh, option that's available online, but we can still see the magnification. This is with a 40 times objective, uh, still fairly low. We we're not really able to see the, the level of magnification that we should see. Uh, we will be able to identify some of the red blood anomalies with this. There are some red cells with indentations, so cloud patterns we'd be able to see. At this magnification, it would be difficult to tell some of the anomalies apart, uh, cloud patterns, poikilocytes, and those sort of things would be difficult to see. Uh, structures around the thrombocytes also. So still the magnification is not great here. Um, it can't still is see a any problem. bacterial forms either, can you? Well, that's the important thing, Elizabeth, is that you need to be able to, to actually get in to the plasma, you know, in between the cells. And when, when we have an example of one of our microscopes, you'll, you'll be able to see the difference in what actually stands out in the plasma. So in, in most cases, when you look at a live blood sample in dark field, you'll see color microns, you'll see small little fat particles moving around actively in the plasma. And if you're not able to see even those with your dark field microscope, then you should know that it really is not going to be to be suitable for, uh, for analysis. So many of the other forms are much finer and much smaller, much more fainter, you know, so it's, it's, it's completely impossible to see those. So this is... Do you have an uh, example of what it should look like? 
Yeah, so this is also it's 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 close. This this microscope is about 70% of the way there. So this is now with the hundred times objective. Uh, and here we are able to see a little bit of clarity in between the cells. So there's a ghost cell that we're able to see. Um, we can see some of these spots most likely would be moving around. So there would be some kind of microns visible in the sample as well. And this is done with a hundred times objective. So this is the maximum level of magnification uh, available with this particular uh, type of microscope. So let's have a look at another example. So you'll notice right away with these types of, of dark field images is that we, we can see the red blood cells and not really much else. There are some structures visible between the, the cells, some things in the plasma that may be visible, but not the level of, of contrast and clarity that we need. And in, in these cases, when you work with a microscope like this, you'll often find that you're going to be wondering if it's a, you know, if you're looking at a chondrite or if it's an acid or if it's a sunacid or is it a rod form bacteria because the, the clarity is not, not there. We're not really getting uh, enough illumination into the sample to actually see clearly. Let me move on to the next image here. Okay, I think we need to go the other way. Okay, if you just bear with me for a moment, we'll go back to an earlier image. Okay. Yeah, and we have a question as well. All right, so let me just show you these these images. It's just this this image is, is from another um, uh, a microscope that's often recommended for for dark field microscopy. And again, here in the plasma, it's it's just black. We can't really see can't anything. see anything. It, it's it's quite terrible. Um, so let's have a look at what it really should look like. This is just a bright field image. Uh, so let's, this is with our microscope and this is then uh, taken with our microscope. This is just with a 40 times objective. Uh, this is the type of magnification, looking at the size of the cells in relation to the size of the, of the screen here or the size of the image. Uh, we can see that this is a very high level of magnification, almost equivalent to what we saw with that 100 times objective being used with the other microscope. Uh, we can see the clarity, you can see very, very clearly um, all these structures between the cells here. And this is really where things really become important with live blood analysis. We look at structures around the thrombocytes, things like tyroharpin, uh, various structures. We can see fermentation around the thrombocytes here. So that's connected to things like leaky gut syndrome, uh, all form bacteria emerging from, mm -hmm. from here. So these are things that are really only visible if you have enough contrast, if there's enough brightness actually coming out from the base of the microscope going through into the sample. Uh, this is also with the 40 times objective, just again, to look at the fine, faint structures around the thrombocytes, uh, the small structures between the cells. That's really what we spend most of the time looking at in dark field, things like fibrin and all those forms, things within the red blood cells, and of course the shapes and, and, and uh, properties of the white blood cells as well. The benefit with the system also with us being able to achieve this high level of magnification, this is then seen on the viewing screen. Uh, so the screen that you have showing the blood sample to the client, uh, will produce this level of magnification with a 40 times objective. The benefit then is that when we go over to the 100 times objective, uh, we get a magnification of about 4,000 times. Uh, so this is what you'd have in the viewing screen. You can see the size of the red blood cells really you know, quite large. The magnification here is actually a little impractical for our normal dark field analysis, it's a little too magnified. When we normally look through the sample and look for anomalies, you know, we, we have a, a lower level of magnification. So the magnification achieved with a 40 times objective is, is ideal for that. Uh, but when we really want to zoom into a particular area, when we want to look at perhaps the forms that are, that are developing, the pleomorphic growth forms that are that developing in the sample, this is the sort of magnification um, that we then need as well. So uh, it really is very useful to have this uh, this level of magnification available then on the on the microscope, and this is this this level of magnification is beginning here. The four four thousand times uh, is not something that is available with any of the other uh, dark field microscopes being sold out there. Uh, so I would r recommend definitely looking at firstly just the the strength of the light source uh, to look at the actual wattage. 
uh, and the brightness being produced by the microscope and then also to look at the magnification range uh, but look very carefully at that because some of the microscopes will claim to have a max maximum magnification of 2000 times and that would purely be through the eyepieces so that is when you using 20 times instead of 10 times eyepieces on the microscope then looking through the eyepieces with a 40 times objective then would give you a magnification of 800 times uh, and the, the 100 times objective then would give you a magnification of 2000 times but then when viewed on the on the screen it would still be the same level of magnification as with a 10 times objective so it's not that you're getting additional magnification with with that type of setup um, so the the magnification range really is uh, is very important <clears throat> 